How's it going everybody? Thank you so much for tuning into this video. We got some more work to do on the wife's truck today. So she, we finally got it running as you can see in our last video. Uh, we still need to time it uh, probably today or tomorrow. Uh, get the proper timing set up on the injection pump. But we have more work to do. And this is more of a safety thing buying your first truck or anything like that. You look into this, uh, your front end, rebuilding your front end. Um, if you go ahead and buy your truck and you know that, you know, the, the bushings are shot, the ball joints are garbage, tie rods are just done, pitman arm, shit like that. So we have a bunch of front end parts to put on this old girl. And uh, the reason why I'm doing this primarily is the upper control arm bushings. You can see that one's kind of splayed out right there. That one's kind of done. So, in order to get at that, I need to take the top ball joint off anyways. When I'm, so I figured uh, when I'm doing the top ball joint, might as well go ahead and do the bottom. I'll get the uh, uh, new sway bar links in, because that one's toast. Get the um, tie, rod it, uh, tie rod ends, inner and outer. Get them changed and I got new wheel bearings or wheel bearing hubs because the factory ones of course are known for failing this is primarily why I have the ABS light on uh, this one's the real bad side though you can see that got focus there, there we go okay so yeah, that one's really splayed out, and the back is actually uh, just completely worn. There's a humongous gap, what would be right here, to that uh, bolt. So, let's get a new front end on this thing. The little lady back here is removing the... Come on. Removing the adhesive. Off the sides, I bought a little magic eraser for my drill, so uh, she'll be working down the side and getting that adhesive off. I still got to remove the chrome piece over on the driver's side door, but that can wait until this thing is actually on the road. I plan on doing the timing uh, probably today or tomorrow but i will at least want to get the front end done on this thing so let's get at it the first thing you gotta remove is the caliper and then i can get this dually front hub off there and get to taking the knuckle off so we'll start on the driver's side since it's the better of the two all right, so to get the inside lug nuts off, I just use a pry bar of some sort rested on the lug studs on the uh, extension hub. And then you're gonna grab a 21 millimeter wrench and a bigger wrench. Go ahead and stack them together. Get them on the inside. Oh, that one's already broke loose. Stack them and break them loose. For anybody who's wondering, I know I get questions after the fact, and then I don't want to remake the video because uh, I missed it and I gotta tear it all apart again. But let's uh, let's keep going. So now that you got that dually spacer out of the way, go ahead and take off your brake caliper the, the the bolts are uh three eighths uh bit there and get that up tied up out of the way take your uh uh tie rod link off there we go if i can brain today okay so the upper ball joint is riveted in which tells me that these things have either never been replaced, which I'd imagine, or I'd hope that they were, 
or that uh, when they were replaced, they were installed back with rivets. So we got to cut these three rivets off, and then we can separate the ball joint, get this knuckle pulled down, and uh, get the upper control arm out of the way. Um, get your nut off for your CV axle, and then you can go ahead and get to working on the bottom ball joint. When you're getting these uh, tie rod ends out of the knuckle itself, use a hammer and smack the knuckle. Don't beat the level 11 piss out of the tie rod end. You ain't doing nothing. Uh, you're just wasting time. Just give the, the knuckle itself a couple whacks and it should fall right out. I like to... Uh, back the nut all the way off and then put it back on about a thread and that way if it did decide to uh, fall it it's not going to swing or hit anything that I left in the way of course it's just a tie rod in it's nothing super special but uh, I'd, I'd just do that uh, like the the ball joints as well I'll leave the, the nuts partially on there and then smack it out of the knuckle but uh, that way just nothing falls and then I can manually or physically do it myself. But getting there, keep tearing away. So I'll show you kind of what I mean about that hit the, the actual knuckle itself. Hopefully I can do this without smacking the other lot of crap out of the camera. Just like that. Kind of a weird angle. Uh, I kind of get you sitting on this little box and you're just right there. So, yeah, let's uh, back. back that nut off. Push that CV axle in. Come on, you foolish fucking thing. If we could all work together. So getting the rivets out, typically what I do, I take die grinder and I'll cut the rivet, the, the head of the rivet into an X, like, like that. See, I already have these two pieces snapped off and then I'll take a hammer and a chisel, focus. And I will, I will uh, pound those edges off, and then I can pound the rivet directly out, and that will loosen the ball joint. Um, as far as I know, for the four-wheel drives, the upper control arm is, of course, uh, it's depends on which side you're getting, but they are inner interchangeable well no the sides are not interchangeable but the uh depending on which side you get they are the same but the lower control arm there's two different ones you have this uh stamp style that has uh the bottom the lower ball joint bolted in and then you have
like my truck. Let's get these um, thinner, beefier, lower control arms. These ones are forged that have a pressed in ball joint. Uh, personally, I prefer the pressed in ones, but of course, the bolt on ones are easier. The little lady gave up with the uh, rotary for a little bit, so she's working on the front end as well. <coughs> but we're almost torn down. Um, I did buy a new power steering gearbox and power steering pump and uh, pitman arm, idler arm, idler arm bracket. So we'll be uh, replacing those here next. I just want to get that new ball joint put in the bottom, clean up the lower control arm, and then I got to set up that so I can get these upper bushings out. Um, don't necessarily need something like that, but that's going to make my life easier. And uh, it was only like 230 bucks. And as much work as I do around here, I've, I've needed a press for a little while, but I've made do without. This is just going to make my life ten times easier. So let's continue. All right, so got the upper control arm out. Got the new press from Harbor Freight all together. And I got the ball joint off. I uh, just cleaned that up. Um, getting these control arm bushings out, uh, I recommend getting an air hammer, of course, and just pounding them out. Uh, if you're going to try and do this with a hammer, uh, it's going to take you literally forever. Uh, you can also get a set of torches and burn them out uh, just make sure not to nick the upper control arm itself because you'll be buying a new one but yeah these just push out and then like i said you cut the heads off the rivets and the ball joint sits in there on the bottom once you cut the heads off you can take the hair hammer with a center punch bit and just push the rivets out and it will <laughs> fall right out now the upper ball joints got uh yeah they're yeah they're pretty wore out the bottom ones are actually pretty good but i'm already here i might as well replace it now i just gotta press the new control arm bushings in put the upper control arm in i already have the bottom ball joint just sitting in there i gotta tighten it up but and then i gotta get the sway bar link put in get the cv axle put back in i gotta take down the uh steering link and the power steering box in the idler arm because i got new ones and get all of them put back in so to get at the uh, bolts for the upper control arm i ran into the shock getting in the way so i just undid the bottom bolt for the shock picked up on the lower control arm because if you don't the torsion bar is going to force the lower control arm down and it's a real pain in the ass once it's all the way folded so just get a jack to support it take the uh, shock off and then you can get at the bolts for the upper control arm but i think i'm gonna push the New one's in, uh, install it, get to the power steering box, and we'll see you in a second. And just like that, look how much 
better those are. The old ones were just absolutely toast. New ball joint upper and lower ball joint are in. Um, when I do the other side, I'll show you guys why you need a press in order to get them bushings in. Uh, let's see. Let's see this bush right here. Yeah, see, this is some things you need to look out for when buying one of these trucks, fellas, and ladies if you're watching. Um, this, is just, this is just maintenance that you're going to have to do to it. Uh, maybe some of you have run into, uh, well, I just got an alignment and everything is tight, but... You know, the truck is still walking, or you feel like the front end's loose. You know, look look for these. the The other side is worse, but uh, I'll show you that when we get get to that point. But now we're moving on to the hub. So these three quarter and one ton trucks, um, unlike their fifteen hundred brothers, they uh the hub is actually on the outside and then you have your rotor and then you have your knuckle so get these four bolts off that'll take the knuckle apart and then you need to separate the rotor and the hub itself so when I get to that point I'll have Andy record that but right now I'm gonna get the hub off I mean I'm sorry the knuckle off and then I'll We'll come back to you guys on the hub there. Alright, so I already got seven of them out, but uh, I'll show you how to do the last one. Unfortunately, my air hammer, which has been around for absolutely forever, the old lady's dad actually gave her it, but it's shit to bed. So if you're looking at your new hub, you got that outside ridge, get that outside ridge right there, and then you look at your new hub, and that ridge is right there, and you cannot remove your rotor while it is on the truck without removing the hub itself, unlike the 1500 trucks uh, where you can just undo the caliper and take the rotor off so you need to pound every single one of these lug nuts out or I'm sorry lug studs and you can just use regular punch and a hammer uh, some some people just if you don't have just a spike punch uh, you'll put the lug nut back on and you can just smack it with a hammer right now I'm not uh, the the reason why you do that is because you want to save your threads for your lug nut but uh you can just buy a center punch and just give it a couple wax it falls right out get that one out of there and then you lift the rotor off the hub. So this one's bad, or I'm assuming it's going to be bad because these have a 100% fail rate, unfortunately. Uh, where they are beefier than the half ton trucks, they do last quite a bit longer than the half ton truck uh, hubs. But uh, these are known for failure on the 90s and 2000s Chevrolet pickups. So just as peace of mind, we are going to install two brand new ones. Um, before you go pounding your lug studs back in, make sure that the uh, taper is not all mired up or anything like that. It's not going to give you any trouble because that taper sits into the hub itself. So right about right about there, it starts snugging down. Uh, you can do this with all of them. If the lug 
stud just falls into the hub. Uh, these are wore out, uh, especially, if, especially if it's a new hub. There's nothing wrong with the hub. It's your lug studs are bad. So that will tighten up into the, uh, the hub and it will hold the brake rotor in place. To repeat the process of putting it on, of course it's just going back together. side first there we go and then you would set this hub up to where it's a little off the ground and you would take a bigger punch which is not around me at the moment and you would drive these studs back into the hub so pretty common problem but we're just making it safe so let's continue so these are the passenger side upper control arm bushings and you can see that they're just off center the rubber is completely toast on the bottom on both sides uh, the front looks a little better but it's all just weather cracked and it's and it's got play so <laughs> we'll get those out the uh, ball joints I mean dude, that thing is not doing anything so getting these out uh, without air a little bit of a pain in the butt but uh, if you have an air hammer, I wouldn't stand there. <laughs> you can. Just pop them right out. That gets them out. Uh, you can do the same thing with the ball joint uh, where these are. The, uh, the riveted that were in there. And just take a uh, center punch and drive them home. And then once you start to loosen them up, the center punch has a taper, so you won't be able to push them all the way through. You just push on the corners, and it'll pop right out. Unless, of course, they egg shape and then they're kind of screwed. And then you clean up the 
surface face of your ball joint and the bushings and uh, I'll show you how to press them in with that press over there real quick so the bushing themselves have a taper on them uh, you can kind of see it right there and then there's a taper in the control arm itself basically you'll just kind of set them in together I'll just back off from the jack real quick rings do you thing just kind of get it on the ridge of those uh, I'm sorry of the upper control arm these little plates right here you can see kind of where I'm setting it in right on the ridge of that so you're not um, preventing this uh, bushing from going all the way through and then if you if you try to uh, just push on the bushing with the, the shaft of the press you're going to egg shape and distort this bushing face so you get a flat piece of steel that will cover over all of the bushing and that way you keep it nice and flat pressing it in And it will just go right down to that taper. No need to squish the absolute crap out of it. And that's your bushing installed. Of course you do the same thing for the other side. And then the ball joint, it's real simple. You just set the ball joint on the bottom of the control arm. Put your three bolts in first. Leave the fourth one so you can put your uh, brake line or ABS cable on the little tab that holds it down. And then put that one in. But yeah, I'm going to get this buttoned up and we'll keep going. So getting your bushing in the control arm, you're going to want to support it and then line up the bushing with the press pin on the press. And instead of just hammering this thing home with the press pin, the press pin is smaller than the actual bushing. And if you try to press it down, all it's going to do is bow the ends of this out because the bushings will going to want to go, or I'm sorry, the uh, face of this is want to go, going to want to go through the bushing. There we go. So get you a flat piece of steel that will cover over uh, all the bushing. Just lightly press it in. There's a ridge on the bushing you can kind of see right here uh there's a ridge on the bushing that will sit down into this ridge that's inside the control arm and that's where you stop you don't don't try to go any further on that uh, you just destroy the bushing uh, especially if you just keep hammering it home and gradually the bushing will fall into place
there you go that's your bush and all installed and this again can be quite the pain in the ass doing it in a vise uh these harbor freight presses are fairly inexpensive i understand not everybody's got the room or the money in order to get one but they do come in handy uh, they make doing this job a hell of a lot easier um, you can do it in a vise it's just it's a bear it ain't it really takes a long time of just beating yourself up for nothing uh, I like Harbor Freight and they sell fairly decent tools but uh, yeah as far as the ball joint goes of course putting it in is just about the same as taking it out except when you put the new one in you're gonna have screws I mean uh, bolts and nuts you'll put the uh, ball joint on the bottom of the control arm run your three uh, bolts in Leave your fourth one out. That is for your ABS cable. Once you get it, uh, once you get your hub back on, you'll run your ABS cable through, and then you can tighten this bolt up. That's not that uh, big a pain to get at, but yeah, looking pretty good. We'll get this one slapped in there real quick, and we're almost done with it. So far, I've got. The driver's side control arm done. We've got the power steering pump in, power steering uh, gearbox in, the pitman arm, the idler arm, the idler, idler arm uh, bracket, and uh, looking to finish up here pretty pretty soon. I mean, it's still got a little while to go, but let's get it done. All right, so everything we got done so far, it's, you know, friggin' late again. Uh, we'll pick it up tomorrow morning, but we got the power steering box and pump in. We got both sides done with new upper and lower ball joints, upper control arm bushings, uh, inner and outer tie rod ends, pitman arm, uh, uh, idler arm, idler arm bracket. Last thing we gotta do is put the wheels and tires on, fill the power steering reservoir, put the uh, fan shroud back on, and this thing will be ready to go for a good ride. Uh, we'll do the timing video tomorrow, and that will be up uh, probably after this video, but we'll pick it up tomorrow. All right, everybody, so got it all buttoned back together. Uh, it is the next day, next afternoon. I uh, already put the wheels on, kind of gave it a rough alignment just to make it till Monday the way we can get it into an alignment shop. Eventually, these wheels and tires are going to be replaced anyways, so I'm not too concerned about how low the tread is on these tires, but we got everything put into the front end. New, new goodies, new ball joints, tie rod ends. Got the pitman arm, steering gear box, uh, power steering pump, idler arm, everything. So I hope uh, what I added into this video helped you out a little bit. Uh, replacing the front end on these trucks, they're not hard. You can take them apart. You, uh, if you can take them apart, you can put them back together uh, with relative ease. Uh, it just takes a few tools. Uh, some things you got to buy, like maybe a press, or you, know, you can do it with a vise as far as those upper control arm bushings as well as the lowers. But, yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed. Please uh, consider subscribing if you're interested in more 6.5 or IDI diesel content. We'll have plenty more coming at you soon you guys have been keeping the wife absolutely busy on the idi legends instagram uh, if you got any questions comments concerns please leave them in the comment section below i will uh, uh be sure to get back to you with any questions comments things of that nature if you want even more indirect injection diesel content please check out idi legends on instagram facebook if you're interested in merch please go by the website 
Uh, I'll leave all those links in the description below, but thank you guys so much for watching. Stay tuned for the timing video. Have a good one, Legends.